So there is a Lightroom and Photoshop trick that allows you to use multiple masks at once in a way that you're probably not used to seeing. This is a technique that should be a lot easier to use and a lot more straightforward, but for some reason, Adobe hasn't really pushed it out or made it clearly obvious. If you know how to use it, it's very easy to use, but for most people, it goes right over their head. So I wanna show you how to do that in today's video. We're gonna be starting in Lightroom today, and then we're gonna move over into Photoshop. So if you only use one software or the other, you can just go ahead and hit the table of contents down below Below, skip to whichever software you want to watch or if you use both software then definitely go ahead and watch both of them because it is going to be super helpful let's go ahead and jump in there we're gonna be working on a wildlife and a landscape image but this can really work on just about any type of image but like I said we're gonna be starting here in Lightroom first so we've got this moose image here now let's say in this example we wanted to create some light coming from the right side you can see how there's some sunlight hitting this moose's nose or maybe not sunlight but maybe indirect light coming from this top right corner now typically a lot of people might grab a linear gradient and do something along these lines. But the problem is, you know, as you adjust this around, we're also brightening the moose. So we're not really creating any depth in our photo. But to create depth in our photo, we can actually do something a little bit different. So I'm going to delete this mask. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to create a subject selection. So I'm going to click that subject box there. Now I'm selecting the moose. I want to be selecting the background. So we're going to go and hit these three dots and hit invert. Now, this is really where the fun comes in because you can see now I have a selection of the background, which is great. I can brighten or darken the background, but I want to still create that linear or radial gradient. Now, there's not an obvious way to do this other than like you can use the brush and just paint all this out. The easiest and least destructive way to do this, though, is to actually hit these three dots here and hit intersect. What intersect does is it allows you to combine two masks. Imagine like a Venn diagram. Intersect is the center only the places in the image where both masks have something masked in will show through when you use intersect. So that's where this is really going to come in handy. Uh, previously, I've used subtract and then made the gradient and then done an invert of that. But this is so much easier to just do intersect mask. Then let's do let's just do radial gradient. It gives us a little bit more options here. Now you can click and drag from the center. I'm going to hit command minus a couple times just to zoom out. Now you can see as I adjust the size of this here, only what is showing in the radial gradient and in the invert of the subject is actually showing here. So it allows me to create some pretty directional light just like that. Now you could go in, add your light, you know, bring the exposure up. Uh, let's click back on the or command plus, make this photo a little bit bigger. Let's warm it up just a hair. Maybe we'll go down into the dehaze, drop that a little bit. Maybe we'll punch the whites, you know, a lot of different things you can do here, kind of outside the scope of this video, but something along those lines. That's how you make that nice selection right behind the moose. Now, let's say we wanted to like brighten the, um, I don't really want to call it a snout, but I guess it's the snout, it's the nose of the moose. Uh, we can create a new mask here, and this time we're going to select subject once again. We're not going to invert it this time because we want to select the moose. This time we're going to hit the three dots and we are going to intersect once again with a radial gradient. Now as you drag this radial gradient, you will see that it only selects the area where the moose is in, which is very, very convenient for making this a nice feathered selection. Now I'll show you what I had in mind here. Something like that. Increase the exposure. You know, just brighten that spot where that sunlight is hitting that moose. And you can, of course, adjust this around as you see fit. Somewhere in there, it looks pretty good to me. So let's go and look at this on a landscape photo here. Uh, I'll show you one more example here in Lightroom before jumping over into Photoshop. So we've got our landscape photo here. We've got this decent sky, but it's relatively subpar um, considering the whole specs of this photo. Don't worry about this dust spot either. It's bothering me too, but I'm not going to worry about it. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a sky selection. Now, if you watched my last video, you'll know that I don't recommend using sky selection anymore. I recommend using this landscape tool. Uh, it creates a little bit better selection of the sky. I'll link that video here if you want to check that out. I'm going to hit mountains and we are going to create a mask and then we are going to invert that mask. Now, we have a much better selection of the sky. Now, as I go in here, you know, if I wanted to warm up the sky, add some magenta tones, you know, you can do all these things to try and make the sky look better, but it just doesn't look realistic to have the whole thing be magenta toned. So we're going to undo all of those adjustments there. And instead, we are going to use our intersect again. 
And we're either gonna use linear or radial. I like radial anytime you're trying to emulate light um, because it's a little bit more realistic to think that the strongest effect is gonna come near the center and it's going to taper off as you get further away from the center. So, you know, you can adjust this. Um, you can fix the feather. I usually leave it at 100. Just put this right where the sun would be. So the sun in this photo is about right there. Now we're gonna increase the exposure because we wanna brighten that a little bit. Now we're gonna warm that up and we're going to drop the tint. Maybe we're gonna raise the saturation. Maybe we're gonna drag this around. Maybe we're gonna increase the white. So many different things you can do here. There's so many tools. Um, so feel free to do whatever you see fit. But these are usually some of the things that I like to do. Maybe, maybe I don't know, do we decrease the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna increase the dehaze just like that. And I'm gonna go back up and finish off and just bring the exposure up a little bit higher. And then we'll drag this taller now before and after. You can see we've really enhanced that sky, but it still looks pretty realistic because you still have these blues up top, so the colors down below are a lot more believable. If everything was magenta toned, it would be very obvious that that's not how the sky actually looks, but when you maintain those blue colors, it looks a lot more realistic. Now let's jump over into Photoshop. I'll show you the one example of how you kind of combine masks here because it is going to be a little different. If you're using Adobe Camera Raw, it's going to be the same as it would there in Lightroom, but if you are a Photoshop Photoshop user or you're someone like me who bounces back and forth between Lightroom and Photoshop, this is how you can kind of combine two masks into one. Uh, the first thing I want to do, uh, let's just say we want to create a little bit of light coming from the left, a little bit of light behind this moose here. Uh, so I want to actually create a subject selection, select, I want to go to subject. Now, if you want better subject selections, make sure you watch my video that I came out with a couple months ago so that you do cloud processing for your subject selections. I'll link that video here for you if you haven't seen it yet. Then you're going to go down here and you are going to create whatever layer you need. Now, for me, I'm just going to use a brightness contrast for simplicity's sake. And I'm going to drag this to the top and you'll see that my layer mask here is applied and that is a nice layer mask because we're using the correct settings that I outlined in that video. Uh, but I'm selecting the moose, so we're going to command I to invert. Now, a lot of people will make the mistake of like, oh, I'll just put another layer mask on. That isn't how that works, unfortunately. So what you're actually gonna need to do is create a, a group. It's called a group, but it should be called a folder because it's a, it's a folder icon. Um, and then you can actually put another layer mask on there. So let's drop this in the group and I'll show you what happens first of all. So, okay, we increase the brightness. Okay, that's fine. Maybe increase the contrast a little bit, but I want it to just be applied to the left side, tapering into the right side. So, um, you know, of course, you could go onto this mask and you could make adjustments with the brush or something, but the most non destructive way that's going to be easiest to edit later, and honestly, the quickest way to do it is just create this group, click on the group, create a layer mask, and then grab your gradient tool. You can hit G on the keyboard if you need to grab your gradient tool. Uh, I am going to use, let's do linear this time just for the sake of uh, mixing it up a little bit. Then you're gonna click and drag. And I want this to be super soft. You can see just how soft I made that. I mean, it's going across pretty much the whole image there just like that. Now you can see how I'm utilizing both masks. If I hide this mask, now it's being applied to the moose. If I hide this mask, it's being applied to the whole background. So these two masks work together. You can do even a triple mask with that. If I wanted to go back in and create one more group and throw everything inside that group, I could create another mask on top right there. This time maybe I'll do a radial gradient. Now I'm like triple masked out. So, you know, there's so many different options of what you can do with this, but you can apply as many masks as you want. Just create a new group and then drag everything within the group. And now all of these masks are being used together. Now, hopefully that makes sense. This is something I'm using in like, I would have to say 90% of my edits where I'm combining multiple masks to exactly select the area that I want. As you can see, and if you've been watching the channel for long, you can tell how much I love those gradient masks. They are so nice. Seriously, something that you have to use on your photos. They just are top notch compared to everything else that you could possibly do. So give that a try. If you aren't familiar with masking and this was a little confusing for you, I'll link my Lightroom masking video. That's gonna talk a little bit about masking, a little bit more of the basics that we kind of breeze through in this video. So hopefully that'll help for you. Um, otherwise, if you wanna keep improving your photography, make sure to leave me a like and subscribe to the channel. Helps me to grow my page. I greatly appreciate you guys checking out this video. And I wanna to continue to bring you free videos that's gonna help you improve your wildlife landscape and any other kind of photography that you may be doing. My name is Austin James Jackson. I want to thank you guys so much for being here. Greatly appreciate the support. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.